Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us today. This is Glass Ceiling Shot. I appreciate you so much for being part of this family. And today I'm so excited because I want to share with you three things about why I love Kenya so much. So Kenya has a fantastic education system. And I know when I'm saying this, some people are already developing goosebumps because they think, of course, um, this education system has been blamed for the joblessness of people in the country or graduates. But I think that is not the point. I think the point here is that the education system is competent in producing graduates, but the government has failed to be able to create enough jobs for everybody. So there is a lack on the part of the government because of corruption and the lack of investment in the right a way in the economy that creates enough job opportunities for these graduates that are graduating from the university. So basically the industries to absorb all the graduates are not there. But that doesn't mean that the education is a bad education system. No, the point is that we also have a value system as Kenyans that places the value of people based on the careers they have that are more of white collar jobs than any other jobs that people may hold, just like being a carpenter or maybe a shoemaker, maybe um, being um, a tailor. This is something that people really don't look at it as a respectable career. But at the end of the day, the new curriculum that has been brought into the Kenyan system is now looking into that and it is expanding uh, and changing the direction and thinking of the new generation so that they can be able to actually respect all job opportunities and so that they, there can also be as many jobs for everybody as possible. Therefore, the government has come in now to actually fund. But let me start by saying that when you're born in Kenya, you uh, at the age of five, you start with pre-primary and then you go to primary school and then you go to secondary school and then you go to the university college or polytechnic. So in the primary and secondary school, the government comes in and subsidizes education and especially in public schools, uh, subsidizes most of our education costs and so that as many people as possible can be able to access this education. So primary and secondary school is... Um, compulsory and all school going children must go to school and they try as much as possible the government tries as much as possible to ensure a hundred percent transition from primary school to secondary school and because also the constitution uh, and basic education that is primary and secondary school is a right for every kenyan so the government has really made a lot of effort to ensure people transition. Of course, there, we know that there will still be a number of people that don't transition. Then when it comes to the university or college or polytechnic, the government still comes in in form of the Higher Education Loans Board where they advance people loans and these loans are advanced to individuals to go to school to pay their semester fees, their accommodation and also to be able to feed. So the money, of course, is not a lot of money per se, but it is enough money that can sustain a person uh, to be able to go through the education system. So most of the time you find that this money is allocated by the Kenya Ed Education Loans Board or what we call, the one we call HELP in form of um, uh, loans to the most needy. Like people that are more needy get more loans or get the maximum loans. And when I say needy people are people that come from families where their parents maybe probably don't have really decent jobs. Uh, I mean, not de they are not making enough money. That's what I would say, poor background, or probably people that are have no parents at all, probably to even support them, or people that come from uh, families that can partially be able to afford their to pay their semester, I mean, or their university fees. So they can actually, they accommodate a range of people and the loans are allocated based on how much needy a person is. So they are able to assess how much a person needs based on the information you give them in the application form, but they also like are in a position to be able to, through the national identity cards that you provide there to be able to know who your parents are and try to see whether this profession they have professions or not they can tell from the uh, kenya revenue uh, records that each person has like they can be able to tell the kind of professions that people hold based on the tax returns information so they have access to a wide range of information that shows people shows them 
who this person that is applying the loan is, they are also able to sometimes get recommendations or letters from um, different and various places. Let me just not go into the details of it because probably at this particular point it's not really very necessary. But I just want you to know that it is possible for somebody that doesn't really have a lot of money in Kenya to go through the education system. So it is the ease with which you can actually study in Kenya that makes it really a very a lovely thing for me so if you don't really have like parents and you're in the university or colleges there are also some bursaries that come up you can actually apply this is money that you don't have to refund but at least you are able to be get that money you can also get the same amount of money from the cdf which is the money that has been set aside by the government through the county or constituencies through the members of parliament's office to be able to allocate to those students that really need the money. So basically what I'm saying is I love Kenya uh, for the virtue of the fact that everybody can access the education system equally. And even for the poor people, the system is quite conducive. So people don't really have a very big excuse of not proceeding with the education as long as you work so hard and you get the right grades that are needed for you to go to the college or to the university or whatever point that you're supposed to go. So what remains is for individuals to actually work hard. And then we have other things like scholarships from so many other places that you can actually get. You don't necessarily have to even get most of the time the money from the 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 higher education loans board. So with that, then you find that uh, the second thing that I love about Kenya is the fact that 85% of our men are literate. That is, the literacy rate of Kenya is 85% for the men. And for the women, it is 78.2%. And this is something that is very lovely. And because the gap between how the literacy rate of women and the literacy rate of men is very small, at least it's not that much. It is there, but it's not as much as the one you would find probably in Nigeria, where you find... The one for Nigeria, the literacy rate for men is 71%, that of women is 56%. So you see there is a very big gap between literacy rate between men and women in Nigeria compared to that in Kenya. So you find that a majority of the people in Kenya are educated. And no wonder you find that then when it comes to women, you can see women now coming up and it is you, you can see this literacy rate like it is already feasible and you can see it is feasible in the political space, in the corporate space, in university space. As women, more women from Kenya are now like going to higher and higher education, pursuing PhDs, uh, getting employed in the universities, also getting employed in, in, corporate, in the corporate world. You can see women going into politics. You can see governors, women who are governors. You can see senators. Uh, women who are senators, members of parliament, like you can already see that the results are already showing. And this is because probably the men and women are able to speak in language that they understand. Uh, and also our men now are so much aware of the value of supporting women to be able to work and have a career. So at the end of the day, then for a country like that, then that means we are moving in the right direction and we are like... That makes it so lovely for me uh, as a person. So the other uh, final point why I love Kenya so much is the Succession Act. When I talk about succession is that women and men can actually inherit property equally at the family level. So if you have sons and daughters, as a father you're supposed to allocate all of them inheritance equally. Whether they are married, whether daughters are married or not, they are entitled to property. I'm not saying that uh, we are so perfect that Kenya has not overcome issues of culture. Of course, we have culture issues coming up here and there, but most of the communities, women are in a position to like inherit properties. When I say properties, I mean land, estates. They are able to get allocated this. And why I love this point so much is not the fact that women can actually inherit property. It has so many advantages that comes with it in the, by the virtue of the fact that at least you realize that women 
don't have to give birth to so many children like it used to be in the olden days. For example, you would find a woman getting married. When she gives birth to only daughters, she would continue to give birth to many, many, many so that she can get a son. So you find that women now can sit back and relax because the law takes care of them and because all children are equally important. None of them is better than the other. That's an advantage, number one. At least then by not giving birth to so many children, then women are able to get out there to go and work. They are also in a position to go out there and pursue careers, studies. Then women are in a position to also uh, be able to like get empowered. And also this comes and brings a multiplier effect in the, in the society by enabling the country to be much more like uh, stable, and not like over multiplying a lot of poverty because women are giving birth to so many children. You know, this so many, uh, having so many children is a good thing because we say children are a blessing. But now let us not be naive because a very big population will create a lot of poverty and the woman, women will be so overwhelmed that they will not be in a position to be able to pursue any careers. So you find that women in Kenya do not really like have so many children. A majority of them like, like to have two, three, at least for this new generation, uh, compared to the older generation that could have five. I don't even know how many uh, people that I know that always had more than five. But a majority of the people in Kenya don't really like have to bear so, so many children at once. So uh, the point that I'm trying to pass across here is that at least Kenya is a work in progress, but at least we are moving to the right direction. And this can really be seen by the way uh, uh, Kenya is now so progressive and we can see how women uh, are playing out in the, in, the, in the political space because they feel like they have enough space to express their rights and also claim what they, they want. And we can see some level of e equality coming up slowly by slowly. Of course, it has to be gradual because this is Africa as well, but at least we are making... A, we are progressive and making the right steps to the right direction. And this is one thing that I love so much about this country called Kenya. So please leave us your comment below. Let's know what you love so much about Kenya. Let's know um, what you think about what, what we've said here today. Leave us your comments below. Like our video. Please share with other people so that we can at least continue to learn and grow this channel. Please, if you have not subscribed, don't forget to leave to subscribe to click the subscribe button below and also yeah see you in the next video i don't really want to talk and talk and talk but bye bye